It is Friday, September 4th. Let's talk PlayStation. Okay, we have a lot of news stories to go over from this past week. A lot of uh, PS5 items to cover here. But first, as always, that PlayStation Plus reminder. The September games are available right now. That's Street Fighter V and Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. You have a lot of time to download these games or add them to your library. I want to start with this, though. If you live in Europe, and depending on your local grocery store, you might see these uh, Doritos, which could win you a PlayStation 5. I don't think these are available in the U.S. just yet, or if they're coming over at all, but... You know, this is, it's kind of weird, right? Because we're two and a half months away from the console launching. Sony has reassured us over and over and over again that it's going to launch this year. And yet, it still really doesn't feel like that. And despite that feeling, we're still seeing the natural expectation of a product launch, which is promotional emails are going out, advertising campaigns are starting, and now you're seeing tie-ins and collaborations with other brands, like Doritos, for example. I mean... I don't know, it's just, it almost feels out of place, but really, I mean, we're going to start seeing stuff like this pop up left and right. I think even Series X already had a food brand tie-in or something like that where it was a promotional giveaway for that console as well. Um, the only thing I'm reminded of is the Taco Bell giveaway for the first, I think it was in 2014, the first year of the PS4, and that was actually a custom gold console. What a bizarre device, but, uh, you know, that was something that happened. Anyway, moving on though, we have our September update for PlayStation Now, WWE 2K19, and uh, Observation will be on there indefinitely from this point forward, and then Final Fantasy XV will be on there until March 30th, 2021, and then Resident Evil 7 will be on there just until November 30th, 2020, this year, so a little short on that end, but four new titles just joined in September. Next up, we weren't able to cover this on LTPS last week. This news broke right after I published the video, but Insomniac Games has confirmed that Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart will feature a 60 FPS performance mode, much like Spider-Man Miles Morales. Great to hear. I love this being more commonplace for people that do want to favor a higher frame rate. And it will be the same deal here where you're going to be sacrificing something, which in this case would be your resolution. You would still get what Insomniac's doing. They'll be doing temporal injection, so it's not quite checkerboard rendering. This is the same reconstruction method they used in the 2018 Spider-Man. So if you have used a PS4 Pro and played that game and you saw the results there, this is what you'd expect here. So uh, remember, there's always got to be some kind of give when we talk about these performance settings. So either way, it's still fantastic to hear that if a high frame rate is really important to you, that'll be an option for Ratchet and Clank. And also, while we are talking about Insomniac's titles, good point to bring up here that for Spider-Man, this game was recently ranked as one of the most anticipated this year, alongside Marvel's Avengers, and also Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. This is from the research firm Nielsen. They're a very large group. They look at consumer spending habits, what people are interested in. They do surveys. They look at a lot of different data points. And so for this, they surveyed about 6,000 people, and this is the conclusion they came to. Uh, what's notable here is that we can say a lot of great things about PS5's launch lineup in that launch window where you know, within that first year, we're looking at uh, Horizon Forbidden West, GT7, Demon Souls, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, Little Big Planet, all those timed exclusives, a lot of third-party software. There's a lot of great stuff, but we really can't undermine just how important something like Spider-Man really is. That's why the 2018 game did so well. That's why Miles Morales, despite it being openly a shorter game, can sit alongside Call of Duty, Marvel's Avengers, fittingly, even Cyberpunk 2077. I mean, this is a game with staying power, and it's so important for it to be a part of PS5's launch window or potentially a launch title. We're expecting it to be a launch title. I fully expect this game to be PS5's leading first-party game for a while, at least in sales. You know, it has a wider reach. It'll be potentially cheaper, which means it'll devalue quicker. Once people buy their PS5s, they can pick it up for 20 bucks. It just... It has that appeal over the long term and it will have staying power in the market. Moving on, it looks like the official Twitter account for Gran Turismo is openly asking fans what card they'd like to see featured on the game's box art. And so if you head over to Twitter, you can send in your submission. A lot of fans are already vouching for certain cars they'd like to see featured for the game's box art. Uh, honestly, I would have thought they would go with the Porsche 908 that they prominently featured during the See the Future event gameplay reveal. It's a very iconic car with a lot of visual flair, and it just looked gorgeous with the colorway that they chose to present it, so that seemed to make the most sense to me. Uh, my personal submission would probably be, I don't know, probably, I'll go a 2008 Tesla Roadster. I think it should be old enough and iconic enough for Tesla's history right now and what they're currently doing for the auto industry. Granted, that car is based off the Lotus Elise platform, so... Visually, it, it's just a Lotus, but I don't know. That would probably be my pick. 
Now, of course, one of the more surprising reveals out of the See the Future event was Kenna Bridge of Spirits announced for PS4, PS5, and PC. And uh, it's always great to see a new IP, but it's even more exciting when it's a new IP that's a platformer that looks as good as Kenna did. It's been a long time since we've seen something like that, so very refreshing. I'm excited for it, and a lot of people are. And it turns out we'll find out more about this game very soon. Game Informer is going to be featuring this game um, for their next cover, so it's going to be uh, there's going to be a lot of details coming out about this particular title. We won't, you know, follow this game too closely because there's just so much going on, but we'll keep our eyes peeled on how it turns out. For our next news story, we've got another confirmed PS4 to PS5 upgrade. This one's Dead by Daylight, and this is exactly how we want to see it, ideally, which is it's free from PS4 to PS5. All your progress carries over, all your content carries over. On PS5, you're looking at 4K60, major graphical enhancements. Every six weeks after the game launches, you'll see more visual enhancements through some software updates. Uh, the game is uh, aiming to launch around the holiday 2020 window. So around when PS5 launches, they'll hopefully have a PS5 native version ready to go right off the bat. This is the best way to do it. It seems like most publishers are doing this, but obviously some of the larger ones are, you know, charging $10 or you're not seeing a completely smooth transition with uh, your progress carrying over. Again, it's a title by title basis. You know, even with the smart delivery thing on Xbox, it gets really muddy uh, when you look at each particular publisher and how they want to handle this. Now, if you didn't see our Tuesday video, it was more of a news update like LTPS where we went over Sony's corporate report for 2020. Some interesting details in there about how Sony's approaching PS5, their strategies, things like that. One thing we didn't cover in that video though was a separate pamphlet they released called Sony Technology and kind of the same thing where it's very promotional, just talks about their product lineup and you know what makes them work and tick and the Sony Group's vision and things like that. For the PlayStation 5 section, there wasn't much in there except one new detail we learned about an SDK feature part of PlayStation 5 for the DualSense controller, where it reads, and I quote here, we have created a haptic vibration waveform design environment that anyone can use easily. In this way, we have not only developed a tool that allows game creators to design an impactful, natural, and comfortable vibration waveform in fewer steps, but also created a method of almost automatically generating vibration patterns from a game's sound effects. So it's been a while since we talked about something like this, but it's a good example of just how important it is to have a great SDK for your developers, where the reason why Sony had such a dramatic shift from PS3 to PS4 was to be more developer friendly, developer focused, and more importantly, providing the tools necessary for developers to make great software. And that's exactly what we saw on PS4. And same deal going into PS5. You want this machine to be very developer friendly. And for PS5 specific features, you want there to be tools in there to alleviate some of that workload from teams. So for something like DualSense with those adaptive triggers, the haptic feedback, it's great to hear that there is a tool in here that uh, somewhat, you know, retroactively adds this feature based off of game sound right now. Depends on how well that tool really works right off the jump. I'm sure there still has to be a lot of optimizing and fine tuning, um, but you know, it's a good jumping off point for teams to not have to spend so much time figuring out where do haptics make sense, where do they not. You know, this is something that they can toy around with and it gets them faster to a point where, this, where it makes sense for the game that they're building. Next up, while this information isn't coming directly from Sony, it sounds true and it probably is true, which is that PlayStation 5 will not feature an optical audio port. This is coming from the company Astro Gaming, which puts out a line of gaming headsets and they detailed their latest product for PS5 and Series X, how it will work on both consoles, just needing separate adapters, and that uh, also if you're a current owner of a headset right now on PS4 and X1, how you can bring that forward to next gen because these consoles won't have optical audio ports. And uh, they basically claim you'll need an HDMI splitter, you'll buy it directly from them. If you have a serial number for a headset that you own right now, you can input that to get a discount, and the HDMI splitter will support HDMI 2.1, uh, 4K pass-through, HDCP, uh, they guarantee you'll still get, you know, lossless quality, so you won't see any drops or input lag or anything like that, um, which is great to hear, although this is discouraging for anybody that's still running an audio setup right now, whether through Astro headsets, their party headsets, or, you know, a sound bar or sound system that's still going through optical audio, that's no longer an option. I would say this isn't a big deal, but it seems like uh, there's a vocal minority of people still running setups through optical audio, and I'm not one to, to know audio well, but it's my understanding that optical is fairly outdated at this point, and you can get much better sound quality through HDMI uh, just off of HDMI alone. So, you know, based on where we are today, I mean, you can certainly abandon uh, 
your current setup, although that's obviously a financial investment. So it, it sucks, but um, you know there there are probably some options you can look at beyond what you're what you're doing right now. But uh, anyway, moving on to our next news story. If you remember, what was it? Two weeks ago now, we talked about Sony's first global ad spot for PS5, which was a live action commercial, and that was serviceable, but it's never really the best way to really present a product, I feel. Well, now we've got another commercial that Sony posted, and this one I think is much better. Short, sweet, to the point, highlights features, shows gameplay. I think it's great, but alongside this, we got another PlayStation blog write-up. Same deal here, where it's multiple developers talking about uh, this time 3D audio and also that very fast SSD that we love talking about here. So for something like Spider-Man Miles Morales, we're hearing beyond near instant loading and fast travel, the SSD and its speed allows us to more quickly load in and display more detailed assets. For Demon Souls, as the developers of Demon Souls, we are already changing the way we think about the SSD. We see it not just as storage, but also memory, utilizing the speed of the SSD to load data at blistering speeds, bringing you straight back into the action to avenge your many deaths. That is quite notable. I get very annoyed going through a Souls game, and uh, you know you die a lot, and those those load screens suck. For Hitman 3, the blitz fast load times we are seeing on the PS5 console encourages player experimentation more than ever. Far Cry 6, the SSD is a game changer. I think as this generation matures, we will see some amazing innovation in streaming and open world game design. Under the Tempest 3D Audio Tech Engine, we're hearing from the game director on Returnal. 3D audio is exciting because it can create a more convincing and accurate soundscape for players and a stronger sense of place in a fast-paced action game with lots of verticality like Returnal. It can also help the player's situational awareness and make it more intuitive for players to pinpoint the locations of nearby enemies or incoming projectiles in the heat of combat. That might actually be useful to hear something above and below you for a game that does focus more on something like verticality. For Horizon Forbidden West, now with the PS5 console's Tempest 3D Audio Tech Sound Engine, we'll be able to play sounds in such a way that players will be able to locate the machines around them with greater ease. From Resident Evil Village, audio is a key feature to really push the next-gen experience with PS5. It's almost as if 3D audio tech was made specifically with horror games in mind. It used to be that in order to get that spatial audio, players would have to invest a lot of their own time and money. Now, just putting on a headset, they can get the full 3D audio experience. You know, with the SSD, at minimum, across the board, every single game is going to benefit. Just at minimum, huge quality of life improvement, and then there's so much more potential just from a game design approach, like with what we're seeing with the Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. With 3D audio, though, it really is, I think, more of a title-by-title -title basis, where some games are going to truly shine in the more unique aspects of how they really utilize spatial audio and this awareness and presence, and certainly that goes into virtual reality as well. You know, that might be more specific to certain games and you know for others it may not work all that well or may not even be super beneficial but there's a lot to explore with 3d audio and again it's something that i think most people won't benefit from until they until they really get to try it themselves now it looks like we've got another slip up when it comes to this release date discussion uh, what we saw this week was called Duty black ops cold war a trailer get uploaded where towards the end of it it said november 13th for playstation 4 current gen like we expect but then we also saw Holiday 2020 US and Canada, I think it said. Um, but then there was a separate line holiday or later in 2020 for all other territories suggesting that possibly the PS5 version of the PS5 console is not going to see a global launch like we're all expecting. The trailer was corrected, re-uploaded, now it just says Holiday 2020 for, you know, for just PlayStation 5 and a blanketed statement. Uh, once again, this kind of goes back to what we've been saying over and over. The only one who knows is Sony, and they may not actually know or have a finalized date just yet. Retailers are guessing. Third parties are guessing. We hear holiday 2020 because that's what it is right now. There is no date right now. We just cannot keep feeding off of these little things that keep popping up. Until we hear it from Sony, nothing else is official. Moving on to our next news story, this is a minor update here, but it looks like WB Interactive is no longer up for sale. If you recall, AT&T was uh, looking to sell off this division to uh, lower their debt, and that uh, possibly Microsoft was one of the interested parties, so we talked about you know what WB's portfolio looks like, what that could potentially mean. This was part of the saga of Sony also looking at Liu Technologies and what that portfolio meant. But we've got two major acquisitions here, and both of them fell flat, nothing happened, and uh, really, there wasn't, even for Liu Technologies, which to me felt more of an interesting buy versus, say, WB Interactive, which is a lot of licensed properties, which may not come with a whole lot of actual true IP ownership. Even in that circumstance, both of these I don't think would have been the most meaningful, but, you know, 
it really depends on how Sony and Microsoft would have looked at it from their perspective. Now, if you recall the past few weeks, we've been uh, following some rumors about Sony's uh, continued aggression on acquiring more third-party deals. Two suspects that we've heard for specific games would be Final Fantasy 16, but also uh, Silent Hill Soft Reboot. Well, we have an update for both of these. For Final Fantasy, we saw a new Twitter account made just last month uh, in August, Final Fantasy 16 underscore JP. And if you try to retrieve the password for this account, it looks as though this was registered with a Square Enix email. So this could be a real official account that has been secured ahead of time for what could be a potential reveal soon or potentially a year out from now, who knows? Um, slight murmurings in this area, just that uh, looks like the game certainly exists and uh, we'll have to wait and see how that really plays out. For the Silent Hill Soft Reboot, not a major update, just that what we saw was a lot of conversations back and forth on Reset Era from uh, multiple people that have claimed to know about the existence of this game and basically they were cross-checking their information with each other to see you know what they heard versus what the other person has heard and basically you've got dusk golem which people aren't thrilled with anymore but he's actually still on reset era just no longer a mod you've got catharsis uh robert serrano and then also we still have reliant horror which apparently had their own independent uh, sources confirm this that uh, this silent hill game is very much still coming um, with uh, Sony funding some of the project that uh, Konami will just collect uh, some some revenue that uh, they're just letting go of the not letting go of the IP but just they're licensing out the IP so they're kind of hands off in this approach. Japan Studio involved, uh, Toyama's uh, involved. It's really the same stuff we've been hearing, just that this recent conversation has yielded everybody being in agreement that yeah we think it really is happening just we don't know when it's happening we don't want to release too much information because then it gives out you know our sources and this is really the cat and mouse game with trying to follow you know insider information and things like that you have to take it for what it is um and that really is the case at least if this was legitimate information if you are too specific you're risking somebody's 50 60 70 thousand dollar year salary 100k salary anybody that's even remotely close to the project that would have insight to this information i mean kind of silly to let go of this stuff on an internet forum so that that's the thing i mean you can humor it all day but it from what we're looking at right now at least we've got a number of people that have uh, been claiming this for quite a while that the game started around 2018 or possibly 2019 so just going off that timeline i mean we shouldn't expect to see this game soon which um you know it was kind of like the expectation i think six months back before like the see the future event we thought okay well maybe we'll actually see this game get announced but uh the the understanding now is that this game isn't as far along as people are expecting either way we'll continue to follow this rumor and see how it pans out for our next news story meet a molecule one of the co-founders alex evans recently announced a departure taking a break stepping down over on twitter he announced Hey, so a few months ago, I did a bit of a lockdown-inspired soul-searching and decided to step down from Dreams Dev to Dreams Fan, take a break from Game Dev, a career I've been lucky enough to enjoy since I was a spotty 15-year-old. He mentions Meta Molecule is a wonderful place and that uh, Dreams is still in good hands. Uh, Alex Evans, he's been around for such a long time. I mean, he, he was a co-founder of uh, Meta Molecule. They've got a, a really fascinating history, certainly one that I'd love to explore as a video one day. But uh, I still remember the initial presentation for Little Big Planet. I remember a lot of his presentations for that game and then certainly going into Dreams. Uh, so I wish Alex all the best. And uh, speaking of Dreams, check out this wonderful footage of this uh, very realistic uh, nature walk that um, Bad Robo put out. It looks hyper realistic, absolutely nuts. I, it's just mind blowing that this was made in Dreams and it's just amazing how close to photorealistic this looks it's miraculous it just it looks stunning um just another prime example of what's capable in dreams now with all that out of the way it's time to get to let's talk plus the weekly let's talk playstation giveaway where one of you can win a ten dollar psn code i'd like to congratulate this viewer right here i'll be contacting you very soon via email or twitter if you would like to win a ten dollar psn code it's very simple follow the link down below support on this channel a number of ways can gain you an entry and i'll announce the winner next week because i'm trying to pay for your games those are all the news stories that i want to talk about with you all as mentioned earlier the tuesday video was more of a news update so we touched on Sony's corporate report, but also Ubisoft's a weird mention of backwards compatibility, so we briefly go over that. 
coming up. Uh, if you didn't notice, I have that new poster up there that's uh, Jack and Daxter, or you may have seen it on my Twitter, but um, we'll be doing an unboxing of all the limited run uh, Jack collections that finally everything is, is with me now, so I can do one video for all of them. I didn't want to piece that out or anything, and I waited to get that poster frame, so it's all here. We'll do that alongside another video, so I know not everybody's going to click on something about Jack and Daxter, but we'll have two videos just that the schedule might look a little weird. I have to, I'm going to be busy this week, so you may get some kind of weird upload on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. I don't know how it's going to work out, just that expect two videos, and of course, we're still on PS5 Watch. We're in September, so we're still waiting on another event or another state of play, gameplay, OS, the teardown. Um, you know, I mean, everybody's expecting these things, but as of right now, you know, building up to this point, everybody's been wrong about when we should see something for the most part. So it's there's really no clear-cut expectation of when we're going to see something, just... We have to wait and see, and whenever something comes up, we'll be here talking about it uh, to cover it uh, right away. Other than that, though, that's it. That concludes this week's episode of Let's Talk PlayStation. I'm Ryan Benecki. Thank you all so much for talking with me, and I will see you all next Friday.